Good morning, I am Stephen Edholm from SkillCult.com and it is hot. So today I have some theoretical act stuff for you, but it is practical. This is, if I, I, I'm not interested in theory for the sake of theory or philosophy for the sake of philosophy. We're just gonna do some hillbilly science here to talk about, you know, <laughs> to talk about these physics and why they matter to you and how they could help someone understand chopping better and do it better. That's the point. So don't be scared by this equation because it's very simple. It's basically heavy, fast, hard. So I was flipping through this old book of mine. It's called Wildwood Wisdom by Ellsworth Yeager. I've spent a lot of time flipping through this book because it has so many cool illustrations. Of course I flipped immediately to the act section because I'm like, what's up with that? And there's some stuff in here that I um, take issue with. This was a stimulus for making this video, but I already wanted to make it. And also, I wanted to do it because I've heard this stuff said and repeated and written before. In chopping, remember that it is the weight of the axe that really chops and not the force of the swing. Too much power behind a blow destroys your aim. The best way to chop is to swing, swing rhythmically. Do not use force. So some of that's okay, and some of it is somewhere between inaccurate and totally bogus. So I'm going to basically say why the statement is wrong, but what I think that they're actually trying to say as well. And lastly, before we get started, I have several axes. We're going to assume that these axes all have the same handle length, um, but they're different head weights. In chopping, remember that it is the weight of the axe that really chops and not the force of the swing. Um, it's a wrong statement. Again, what he's trying to say, I think, is, is import, very important. Too much power behind a blow destroys your aim. Um, that is typically true, but that completely varies with um, experience level. So if you watch these uh, guys who do racing, like the timber sports, they are chopping very hard and very fast, and they are very accurate. The best way to chop is to swing rhythmically. Can't really argue with that. Do not use force. Well, that's kind of a blunt, broad statement. If he means by force, he means that force always implies excess. Yeah, that that's probably good advice for someone. But again, that varies with experience level. If someone who can do it and they can lay that ax where they want it and hit it really hard when they need to, under some special circumstance, who are we to tell them not to? But yeah, I think that's a good sentiment overall. I, I thought a good way to approach this would be to take his first statement and try to make it true. So let's say in chopping, remember that it is the momentum of the axe head that really chops and not the use of excessive force. Let's say that. Now, if we were to say that that statement, that statement was more true, what that means is momentum or the, the movement of the axe and the energy that's embodied in the traveling axe head is what really does the work. And you don't want to try to add a bunch of power to that to like follow through and push through the tree. And that is true because that will lead to fatigue. It will lead to, you know, fatiguing your hands because you're gripping this thing and trying to slam it through the wood and it'll, it will mess up your aim and all that stuff. So if we look at it that way, then that's true. But to say that the weight of the ax does the work is not true. So we're going to assume for the rest of this conversation that you can't add a lot of energy to the process of cutting a piece of wood after the axe head hits the wood. So I'm not going to go try to chop this and then push it through the wood. Okay, that's going to tire me out. I can feel, still feel that right here, all the way up here. What I'm saying and what I think he's really trying to say, although I don't think he necessarily understands it intellectually, and that, but that's okay. Again, I mean, he's just, he's trying to describe it, but he's just not doing a very good job is that, you know, I get this thing going and then I just let it do its work. But it is not weight, it's momentum. And momentum is a combination of weight and speed. Mass or weight, velocity or speed equals momentum or embodied energy. And I like to say embodied energy because it describes more what the thing is. There's a certain amount of energy um, kinetic moving energy in the head when it's swinging and when that hits the wood that's what does the work I have energy but what am I going to do with it you know if I hit at one angle it's going to do something different than if I hit at a different angle so we're just going to assume all that is all good so assuming all of that it is the embodied energy in this head from that equation that does the work 
Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat myself a lot, but it, I'm doing it on purpose. You might say, well, okay, then let's get a bigger axe, swing it faster, and we'll have more energy and we'll be done sooner. But if you do that, you're going to realize that that's basically dumb and it doesn't work because you're going to wear yourself out. And there's somewhere, there's a spot where this works and you can keep doing it and it's sustainable. If I get a 10 pound axe and try to swing it really fast, I'm going to last like five blows and then it's time for lunch. So back to Ellsworth, does the weight of the tool do the work? The statement basically says that the weight of the head does the work, but that's not true. There is no place where an axe doesn't do, does work that this isn't at play, velocity. Now, if I just hold this, is the weight of this axe doing any work? No, it has to move. So if I drop it vertically like this, it gets a certain amount of momentum. It's quite heavy. It will actually cut a little bit. It's, you know, it's, it'll do something. So if you see someone using a heavy axe, it will appear, it can appear that they're not putting a lot into it and they're letting the weight of the axe do the cutting, like say if they're using like a four pound axe. So the heavier the axe is, the more that is true. I mean, it's just not true, but it could be considered more true if that makes any sense because there's a spectrum. But as you change weights of axes, this changes entirely and you have to use more speed. So if I take this axe, which is half the weight of that axe, and I drop that, it's gonna do a lot less work. So it's up to me to add more velocity to make it do more work. Okay, so let's say that you know I wanna chop this vertical surface and I'm gonna let the weight of the axe do the work. You ready? It's not going to do any work. It's going to fall to the ground because there's no momentum. It requires a certain amount of momentum for me to get this to the tree. If I swing it very, very lightly, look what happens. It falls. I have to at least get enough momentum. There's a little more. Okay, now we're talking. Should I go out of my way because of what Ellsworth said? to not add any power to that stroke, and no one does that. Why would you? Why wouldn't you just add any little bit of advantage that you have? So instead of going like this and saying, okay, I'm gonna cultivate the minimum amount of work I can do with that, why not just, big difference, small effort on my part. Now when using any given ax, this mass is fixed right? That doesn't change. So what can we change? We can change the velocity. So the question is not, you know, how can we cultivate the minimum amount of velocity to let the weight of the axe do the work? That's completely whack. The question is, how can we generate the amount of velocity that we want to generate or need with, at, with the least amount of effort? If the weight of this changes, then this formula changes to do a given amount of work. So let's say I want to chop into this like a certain depth or something. I have to change the velocity or I have to change the mass, one of the two. A smaller axe has to travel faster to do the same amount of work, but it is this equation that is why I can reduce the weight of my axe by half, but not do half as much work with the same amount of energy. Now, which one's if more efficient? That's a different argument. But I'm just saying that if you cut the weight of the axe in half, the work doesn't go down in half because you're going to use more velocity to compensate for a lighter axe. And if you watch any, any experienced chopper with a light axe or a heavy axe, you're going to see that their technique varies. It's going to look more like they're letting the heavy axe do the work than it will with the light axe. And the light axe is going to be obvious that they're putting a little bit of snap into it. We might say, hey, well, you know, that means it's harder to use a light axe because you have to swing it harder. Well, what is harder? I mean, there's a cost. You know, there's no free lunch here. We're dealing with physics and gravity and all that junk. This is easier to accelerate. Let's just look at it this way for a minute. Um, if, if I want to sit here and argue with someone about what's more efficient and more better, a heavy axe or a light axe, either one of us is going to have a hard time proving our point. Okay, because for one thing, they're not even the same kind of work, but also it's very personal, like each person's different. You'd have to cultivate your ability to use a light axe and a heavy axe both in order to even make a good comparison. And that's between one person, you know, for me to use a light axe and the dude next to me to use a heavy axe and say, well, who's getting more work done and who's more tired? 
That's ridiculous, you know? There's no control in that experiment. So this is very personal and very hard to actually prove, and it really comes down to a point of preference. And also trying to prove it with different work styles and different work environments and all that is almost pointless. You know, obviously there's a point at which it's too light or it's too heavy, but there's a big area in between where you get to make, you know, your own personal choices, and there's other things at play. Maybe you like a heavy axe better, but you're going camping. You know, maybe you're going trekking. You're not going to carry this. That would be ridiculous, right? You can carry this instead, and it's actually portable. And again, the work's not even the same work. You know, this axe is easier for me to gain momentum, and that was not a lot of effort on my part. But this one, if I want that same momentum, boy, I'm going to work for it. But that's not the only kind of work in chopping. We're talking about chopping, not sitting here in our laboratory doing experiments. So if I'm chopping with this axe, it has inertia, right? Inertia is, matter is, is lazy. Well, no, matter resists change. That's a better way to put it. Matter resists change. If it's moving, it wants to stay moving. And gravity or friction or something has to like be fighting it to stop it. If it's in a vacuum, it just keeps moving, right? But if it's still, it wants to stay still. So this axe head is still right now. I have to break its inertia, get it up here, and then to get it moving, I have to like fight its, its still inertia to, to create moving inertia or embodied energy or kinetic energy. And that's what's gonna do our work. So I'm paying a cost. It's not like, I mean, sure, if we had an axe that was heavy, and it was easy to lift and then we just dropped it, say it's a 10 pounds and we just sit there and drop it on our work, well that would be great, but it's not easy to lift. An axe that's easy to lift is an axe that has no authority when it drops because we live in the real world. So there's a cost there, right? And the cost here is that, okay, I can lift this all day and I'm not even gonna notice it. And yeah, it's easier to accelerate, but it, you know, it does take energy to accelerate it faster and it's lighter so we really need to put a lot more speed in it to do the same amount of work. All right, let's talk about physical efficiency for a minute. Can you get a lot of work done by expending a small amount of energy? And as an axe user, I always want to kind of start to be able to dial that in. I don't always do it. I mean, sometimes I like to just go out and get a workout and chop really hard and then later I'll start to tire and then I'll, I'll get into my my rhythm and just relax and chill out, you know, because I do this to also to blow off some steam and you know get out aggression so I don't run to the local McDonald's with an axe and start chopping people up. So in this case we want the desired velocity, not maximum velocity, that's not what it's about, the desired velocity with the least amount of effort. First of all physical efficiency is hard won. It takes time especially with a tool that's hard to learn like an axe and it's something that's extremely hard to actually teach. But I'm going to tell you like the places that you could go wrong. And it's especially important with um, a light axe because again, you do have to swing it fast. Now, two people can do that, generate the same amount of speed, or even one person, and deliver it to a given spot, you know, at a given velocity, and expend entirely different amounts of energy. I could use all kinds of stuff in my body that I don't need to use. I could use parts of my body. I could be, have this attitude of just like, you know, attacking the wood like that. Look how much energy I used versus like, you know, I can hit it the same hardness in the same spot and economize my motion. So economy of motion, and really the other one that kind of goes with, with uh, using muscles you don't need to is just this exaggerated, misguided attitude where you're kind of attacking the work with your whole body and your whole attitude like you're gonna just get it done really fast bad news. Between those three things, tension, unnecessary movement, or like poor economy of motion, you could call that, and just having this like go-getter attitude, those three things will screw you um, if you're trying to chop. You might as well just bend over the log and screw yourself instead of chopping it down. Because here's the thing, what I've been trying to, trying to get to or trying to say is that just because I use a light axe, and I have to make it go fast doesn't mean I'm using a lot of energy to make it go fast. Technique, leverage, you know, learning to relax, making every blow count, these things are what makes this work and mean that I can reduce the weight of my axe without doing a lot more work. It's just trade-offs. I'm not, I'm not making an argument for small axes here. It's, that's like a personal preference. I just want to address this thing that the weight does all the work, which it does not. It's this equation. Always, there's no place in the universe where 
where we were chopping wood where, damn it. Okay, where was I? Something about, okay, yeah. Um, there is no place in the universe that we live in where this is not at play when we're chopping with an ax. What people mean when they say things like, let the ax do the work, let the weight of the ax do the work, is that you just don't go all gung-ho and try to chop your way through you know, something with way too much force and a bad attitude and um, also don't try to push the ax through the work. Let the momentum do the work. I'm trying to take this sort of like, you know, practical wisdom and, and uh, make sure that we're saying it in a way that's accurate, that fosters an understanding of what's actually going on. And if you know this now, then you can start to cultivate it. You can say, okay, well, you know, Stephen is saying like it's about velocity and how much velocity can I generate without too much effort, right? So I'm going to be chopping. Look how hard I'm chopping. Very little effort. I'm using my wrists. I'm just kind of like snapping the axe into the work. Here's a warning. To try to push the ability to cultivate a high amount of velocity, like chopping really fast, which means chopping hard. Basically, let's let's face it. Like if someone says, oh, I'm going to chop, you're going to chop really hard and get through that fast. What they really mean, if it's effective chopping, is that you're increasing velocity. So trying to increase the velocity early and while you're learning to use an axe is extremely dangerous because it's going to sacrifice your control. It's going to be make it more likely that you're going to break handles, you know, injure yourself, break the axe, etc. Well, chill out, you know, don't try to get it done fast. Work on aim. And everyone, everyone experienced will tell you this. Work on your aim, work on your technique, work on not using too much energy. And then as you get better, you can start to just give it that little bit of push. And eventually, you're going to be able to do that when you want to. You'll be able to do it hard without too much effort. You'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. But don't try to do that in the beginning. That's a very important warning. I am not kidding. Few things will get you into trouble faster than trying to chop way past your ability level. So whether you're using a heavy or a light head, this equation, and especially velocity, is a good way to just think about it because it's velocity that you can change. With any given axe head size, you can change the velocity, but you can't change the weight unless you change axes. Too cool. This book's too cool. Wildwood's Wisdom by Ellsworth Yeager.